Hi there. Thank you for coming to my presentation. I'm Amy, a PhD student in ISG group from UC Irvine. Today, I'm going to present our work containing Wi-Fi connectivity data sets for semantic localization. There are a large amount of sensor data being generated every day in IoT domain. Sensor data is not clean and has volume, velocity, variety, and veracity challenges. Our focus today is the veracity, which means that data can be dirty or of low quality. The dirtiness data can be incompleteness, uncertainty, duplication, and so on, which will be described later. This talk today will specifically focus on cleaning Wi-Fi uh, connectivity logs to support semantic localization. When your device connects to a Wi-Fi access point, such connectivity logs will contain the MAC address of your device, the ID of Wi-Fi access point you connect, and the corresponding timestamp. First, I will describe the semantic localization problem given a certain information of locations of user and the full map or space layout. The semantic localization associates a semantic location tag to this user. For example, you are in room 2065. Semantic location tag can be building, floor, region, or room. Note that there are a bunch of work about indoor localization, which localizes a user to a physical location. They either require users to install software on their device or extra hardware in, uh, in the infrastructures. The affordable indoor localization solutions that can be widely deployed have high uncertainty, leading to semantic localization challenge. So why we need semantic localization? First, it can be used to compute the occupancy in a space, which can improve havoc to save energy for buildings. Second, it can be useful for COVID applications to prevent and monitor in workspaces or locating users in large buildings. Third, it can be used to construct accurate model of building usage for space planning. To resolve this problem, we build a locator system which performs semantic localization based on Wi-Fi connectivity data. <clears throat> the left table is a sample of connectivity data. In the first row, a device D1 connects to Wi-Fi access point WAP3 at time 1.04 p.m. If a device connects to a Wi-Fi AP, we know this device must be in the area covered by this Wi-Fi access point, which is called a region and can be a cost location for this device. <clears throat> this problem has two challenges. The first one is missing value challenge. Wi-Fi connectivity data is sporadic. For example, the first table indicates that the device D1 is in the region covered by WAP3. The first table says that uh, it's in the region covered by Wi-Fi AP1. However, the location between these two time points is missing. Where is the device D1 from 104 and 1018 p.m.? The second challenge is called location disambiguation challenge. Connecting to a Wi-Fi access point means that you are in a region covered by this Wi-Fi AP, but such region can be large, which contains multiple rooms. Which room am I in is the question we need to answer. <clears throat> In this slide, I will give a high-level idea of our solution. As for the missing value challenge, we propose an unsupervised learning method to predict the, the missing location value. value. <clears throat> Today, I will focus on the location disambiguation problem. The input to this problem is first domain semantics, such as space layout, the type of rooms, or room or owner. Based on this information, we learn the room affinity, which is a prior and can be expressed using the probability that given you are in a region, you are in which room in this region. For example, if you know your office is in this region, then the probability that you are in your office is high. The second input is Wi-Fi connectivity data sets and within the group affinity, which captures the probability that a group of people are co-located in a region. 
and we further develop the probability that a group of people are collocated in a room at a given time instance. If we also have room level ground truth data, such as some device is in some room at some time instance, it will provide much more information to learn a more powerful model. Uh, however, it's often difficult to collect such ground truth data in a larger scale in practice. So we do not assume them in our solution. <clears throat> Given the above information we learned, this slide will give a high level process of how we address location disambiguation problem. Given that you are in a cost region which contains several rooms, our goal is to find which room you are in. We create a device node and several room nodes. The weight of age between a device node and a room node uh, is, called, uh, is the room affinity we learned before. Now, if we observe your friend is also in a region which has overlapping with yours at the same time, and we know the probability that you two are co-located is high from historical data, and we can infer that the probability that you are in overlapping rooms such as R1, R, uh, uh, such as R3, R4, and R5 will increase. The weight of age between two device nodes are group affinity. As we observe more people, which are called neighbors, we can expand this graph using the affinities we learned before. Finally, we use a probabilistic model to predict the room you are in iteratively. Note that <coughs> We construct the model and algorithm in two versions, I-locator and D-locator, where in I-locator, devices or users are independent of each other, while in D-locator, independence does not hold. We use the real data set captured by Wi-Fi sensors in DBH building and collect ground truth data from volunteers by logging their daily trajectories and also from the camera data. As for the baseline of fine grained algorithm, given a region, baseline one randomly pick a room as room location, where baseline two always select its office room as room location for the query device. We use accuracy as quality metric, given a query asking what's the location of a user at some timestamp. The answer of this query can either be outside the building or the room location this device is in. Thus, the overall accuracy is defined as the proportion of queries to return correct room or, us, or outside. Recall that the output of cost green algorithm is outside and the region device is in. So cost green accuracy is the proportion of the queries which return correct outside or region. Given the region is correctly predicted, the proportion of queries that returns correct the room is fine green accuracy. Due to time limitation, we only show the main result about the accuracy of the algorithms here. We first classify the users in different predictable group based on the time they spend on their office. Higher percent of such time, more predictable the group is. Each cell in the table contains three accuracy, which are accuracy for coarse green, fine green, and overall method. We look at the fine green accuracy, which is covered as green color. Locator outperforms all baseline in those less predictable groups, except for the group 85 to 100%. The bold numbers are overall accuracy, and the locator outperforms the best baseline by on um, twenty percent, <clears throat> so locator can achieve uh, on average uh, 82, 87, and eighty accuracy for calls, fine green, and overall method. The average running time is half and one second on average for I, I locator and D locator. Locator views semantic localization as data cleaning problems and is passive, requires no active participation of users. Is also off the shelf. It will not cause any modification to existing infrastructures and will also not have any special settings to hardware. 
Uh, thank you for listening and any questions.